brothers and sisters, please put your hands together for Brother Bo Sanchez. And how many of you believe that your future is brighter than your past? Can you embrace someone beside you? Just tell that person your future is brighter than your past. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. My wife and I and my kids, we love watching musicals. And yesterday, we marched to Meralco Theater, and there was the play called Noah, produced by the trumpets, directed by Jaime del Mundo. And uh, really fantastic, beautiful, enjoyable uh, play. And... I got reminded again that God told Noah to build the ark when it was not raining. Did you get that? No, you didn't. One more time. God told Noah to build the ark when it was not raining. And his friends did not understand him. His neighbor said, why are you building a boat in the middle of the desert? But you see, what God was doing is He wanted Noah to build his future now. And friends, when you came here from your home, maybe you were like Noah. You know why? Because your neighbors and your friends, they were scratching their head. I wonder why my neighbor is going to that feast every Sunday. Why is he going there instead of spending time resting at home, watching TV, going to the mall? You go here and you worship God, and it's two hours long? Why? You know what? People don't know that you are building an ark. You are building an ark for the future. You are building a future today. And what is the ark? The ark is not something external. It's you. It's your life. You are the ark. And you are strengthening yourself. You are nourishing and nurturing yourself with the Word of God and with the presence of God. That's what you're doing so that that bright future will be yours in Jesus Christ. And friends, tell someone beside you, good choice for coming here. (laughs) Amen. And let's continue to build that ark every Sunday as we gather together. And if you believe that God will bless you today, say this prayer with me in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to your blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I am God's beloved, I am God's servant, I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I will bless the world in Jesus' name. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Anyone who is joined to Christ, listen carefully, is a new being. Everybody say, new being. New being. The old is gone. The new has come. Say that with me. The old is gone. The new has come. Everybody say, I'm brand new. I'm brand new. Put your hands over your chest. Everybody say, I'm brand new. I'm brand new. God has made me new. Father in heaven, we believe that you are going to make us new. Every day you are renewing us, and so here we are. Everybody say this, Father, change me right now. Let the change start now. I know, Lord, change is a process, but let it start today. In Jesus' name. name. Amen. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto 
my path. Give the Lord a big hand and love Him today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Welcome everybody to the last session of our series, Your Future is Brighter Than Your Past. And today God will indeed speak to you and He will not only use me, I've invited a dear friend to share her wonderful story of freedom to all of you. I met her last year in a caring group. Just for your information, I lead a number of caring groups. And what is a caring group? A caring group is a group of 8, 12, 15 people that meet every week. And they meet in coffee shops, they meet in homes, and they share about what we talk about here on a Sunday. They share about it in their small group, and then they share about their lives. And then they pray for one another. I've been attending and leading caring groups for, oh, I don't know, 30 years now. It's true. I'm a great believer in caring groups. I've seen lives change with a very simple, very simple experience of gathering together, praying together in small groups and sharing their lives with one another. I have uh, two caring groups that I lead for the top leaders of Light of Jesus. I have another caring group for business owners. And I have a caring group that I started last year for those related in the showbiz industry. And that's where I met my dear friend. And so please welcome today my dear friend, Isabel Rivas. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning to everyone and blessings to you all. This is my first time to stand in front of a lot of people to share my story. And I hope I'm here to glorify God and to tell you of my story, which is addiction. But this addiction is different from the drug addiction that we know. I was addicted to cigarette addiction, smoking. My addiction started when I was very young. Um, Tagasindi lang po ako ng sigarilyo sa kalan ng mga kapatid ko dahil sila naninigarilyo. So ako yung, I was the one um, asked to be the posporo of the house para pag nahuli, I will be the one punished and not them. Of course, when we're young, we follow all of our older siblings' um, whims. So, at first, lahat po ng uh, style ginawa ko para umabot ang sindi ng sigarilyo from the kitchen to them. Ando nang ginaganun-ganun ko lang yung sigarilyo, hinihipan ko siya para hindi ako mapagalitan dahil nakasindi pa po yung sigarilyo. Until I found out, nahihirapan ako, natuto po akong maghitit buga. Hanggang sa yung hinitit ko na po, hindi ko na po binubuga. <laughs> Hinihitit ko na rin po yung sigarilyo and I got very, very addicted. And years passed, I started to enter showbiz. And sa showbiz po, it's acceptable to be a smoker because everybody smokes, almost everybody, I would say, especially during my time. Uh, during the 80s po yun. Hindi naman masyado malayo. Mga 30 years ago lang. <laughs> so, ang, ang idea po kasi ng mga taga-showbiz, samahan mo ng kape, yung sigarilyo, pwede ka nang magtrabaho hanggang umaga. So, it, it started that way and I was smoking and smoking and I thought it was a normal thing until hirap na hirap na po yung katawan ko. And I already knew that I was very addicted. Until one day, when I realized that I was really an addict, I was smoking three packs a day. Ang sakit po, ang sakit-sakit isipin that I did that to my body. My skin was so wrinkled. I aged so much. And hindi na po ako nakakahinga ng normal. Parati ko na lang siyang hini, ano, hinahabol yung hininga ko. And the funny part of it is, I would take a bath, and right after I take a bath, the first thing that I would do would be to smoke. 
And so, kahit bagong ligo po ako or bagong toothbrush, I smelled like an ashtray. Now I realize that I really did. But at that time, I didn't know because I was addicted. Until I was crying and crying to God. I, I asked for help from other people. Dadasal ako. And yet, pagkat sinasabi po nila na naghahanap po ako ng, ng matatakbuhan, they would say, Oh, smoking, you have to do it on your own. On my own? I, I can't do it on my own. I'm so addicted. Kaya sabi ko po sa sarili ko, mabuti pa po pala yung drug addict. Pagka-addicted sila, may matatakbuhan silang rehabilitation center na tutulong sa kanila. Pag naman po, alcoholic ka, merong mga basement or doctors who would help you. But my brothers and sisters, yung cigarette smoker, yung addicted po talaga sa sigarilyo like me, wala po ako matakbuhan. So I started to cry out to God every day, every day. Pero habang, habang nagka-cry out po yung heart ko sa Diyos, sige na ba na po ako na sige na sigarilyo, sindi nang sindi. Yung three packs a day, kulang na nga lang, gawin ko pang four packs. Until, one day, I got invited by a good friend, I I, the last alas. Sabi niya, Mare, Mare, may care group kami. Lika, sama ka. Sabi ko, care group? Meron akong pinupuntahan eh. Hindi, sabi niya, si Brother Bo Sanchez ang pastor natin doon. Ah, si Bo Sanchez, I've already read a lot of his books and I really like him. Sige, sama ako. So, off I went and I started to attend the care group. At first, I was hiya hiya. I was not opening up to who I really am inside. Kasi nahihiya po ako. Until one day, I got relaxed na, nagkakilakilala na kami, and I opened up myself. I said, pray for me. Kasi I'm an addict. So they found out about my story. So from then on, lahat sila nakatitig sa akin. Sabi nila, di sila makapaniwala na I'm smoking three packs a day. So, everybody held me, embraced me, and said, we will pray for you. So, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, yun po ang turning point ng buhay ko. Hindi ko po pinalampas yun. Hindi ko pinalampas yung opportunity that there are these people who's willing to pray for me. Of course, there are other people praying for me before, but siguro hindi handa yung puso ko, hindi handa yung buhay ko sa disiplina na kasama ng pagtigil. So, I really, really disciplined myself. I prayed to God. Lumuluhod ako sa Kanya every single day. Pero habang minsan po nakaluhod ako, nandun pa rin po yung sigarilyo. Hanggang sa minsan... At saka, mga kapatid, naninigarilyo ako. Kahit natutulog na ako, magigising ako, nanginginig ako, kailangan ko magsigarilyo. At 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, I would still stand up to smoke. So, when Brother Bo found, about, found out about that, he started to pray for me even in the middle of the night. There was even one time that I cannot forget. At about 2 o'clock in the morning, I was smoking my lungs away. I received a text from the Holy Land. Sabi niya, Isabel, I am praying for you. I'm in Holy Land. And I pray that makawala ka sa addiction mo sa sigarilyo. Wow! Tinamaan po ako. Sabi ko, eto, yung mga tao, pray ng pray para sa akin. And yet, here I am. I have not really decided. I have not done anything. To help myself. So, I started really to pray and to make a decision. I have, again, purchased that, that cigarette cessation medicine. Para, sabi nila, makakatulong daw po yung medicine na yon para makatigil ang isang smoker. I did drink that before. But then I stopped kasi 
Kahit naman po iniinom ko, nagsisigarilyo pa rin ako. So now I said, I will do it again one last time. So, after that, I did give myself pressure kung kailan ako titigil. Hindi ko na po siya ginawang New Year's resolution na ginagawa ko every year. Basat I told myself, God, take over this life. Ayoko na po. Ayoko na pong magsigarilyo. I want to honor you. I want to give you my life. I don't want to give my life to smoking anymore. And so, one day, ang dami-dami ko pong lakad. I woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning. And it was raining, pouring, bumabagyo po. August 1, 2009. Namatay din po nung araw na yun yata, if I'm not mistaken, si Tita Cory, the symbol of our freedom. And I knelt to God and said, Lord, this is the day. This is the day that you'll free me. Bibigyan mo ako ng kalayaan sa addiction na to. Because it's my desire. And I know that you did not design me to be like this. You designed me to be a good person. To a person na nakikitaan ako ng Panginoon at hindi ng usok. So, Six months na po yun, kaya may lakas na po ako ng loob na humarap sa inyo ngayon. And I am free of my addiction from smoking. I just thank the Lord na kung hindi niya ako sinave at that time, pinakilala sa mga tamang tao, wala po ako dito ngayon. Hindi po ako magiging karapat-dapat na magsalita at makatulong sa mga nahihirapan din na katulad ko sa addiction. So, mga kapatid, brothers and sisters, all for the glory of God and for the service of Jesus Christ, I ask and plead to you to continue to pray for me para talagang maging mas malakas pa ako sa araw-araw at talagang Lahat pa po ng mga ibang problema sa buhay, unti-unti nang masolve dahil alam ng Panginoon that I want to serve Him and no other. Thank you. Thank you. Can you stay here for a while? Or just say a short prayer for Isabel. Just extend your hand towards her. Father, we thank you for the work that you are doing in her life. Thank you for the freedom, the gift of wonderful freedom that you have blessed her with. Lord, we pray that you continue to work in her life. Bless her abundantly. And Lord, we're going to pray this, that you're going to use her mightily as a powerful instrument where when people see her, listen to her, they will hear your voice and see your face. Oh, provide for all her needs. Protect her and be her shepherd. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God wants to set you free. I really believe in that. You know what? Many people ask me, Brother Bo, how can I change? How can I remove a bad habit? And sometimes when I have very little time to explain or to say what I want to say, I say this. If you want to change your life, you have to change your thoughts. Because if you change your thoughts, you change your life. Say that with me. If you change your thoughts, you change your life. I know that there are many other things that you've got to do, but you've got to start somewhere. And this is a good starting point. One more time. Tell someone beside you, if you change your thoughts, you change your life. It's true. Ask me why. Because habits of action come from habits of thought. Habits of action comes from habits of thought. And habits of thought is really a long phrase for beliefs. Beliefs are habits of thought. And therefore, bad habits really come from bad beliefs. One more time. Did you get that? Bad habits come from bad beliefs. 
that if you want to change bad habits, you have to change bad beliefs. And where do bad beliefs come from? Ask me where. From bad movies. And I'm not talking about movies of the big screen. I'm not talking about movies made by, by Hollywood. I'm talking about movies made in the small screen of our inner mind. Whether you know this or not, my dear friends, 24 hours a day, you and I are watching inner movies in our mind. And the funny thing is, we've got favorite movies that we watch. I've got an announcement to make. The movies in your life, there are only two. Good movies and bad movies. Good movies are those inner movies in your mind that, that lift you up, inspire you, encourage you, make you a better person. Bad movies are the movies that pull you down, discourage you. I'm going to give you a very simple illustration. This is what we need to do. There's a DVD player in your mind. And what you need to do is open it, get the bad inner movies, put in good movies. Good inner movies. Put it there and close it up. How many of you here are parents of small kids? You will identify with what I'm about to say. If you visit my home, there's a huge library of